let's take a look at R3. The structure cons consisting of R3, addition of elements in R3, real numbers as scalars in scalar multiplication of elements in R3 by real constants, we know that happens to be a vector space or linear space. That is, we know that the structure R3 plus R scalar multiplication has the properties of a vector space. If U, V are elements of R3, their sum is also an element of R3. If U, V, W are elements of R3, the associative property is satisfied under addition. If U, V are elements of R3, the commutative property under addition is satisfied for those two elements. R3 contains the additive identity. In this case, theta equals 0, 0, 0. If u is in R3, its additive inverse is also an element of R3. Scalar multiplication distributes over vector addition. For every real number A and for every element UV in R3, the scalar multiplication of A and U plus V equals the scalar multiplication of A and U plus the scalar mul multiplication of A and V. Scalar multiplication distributes over scalar addition. For all real numbers A, B, and for every U in R3, A plus V, scalar multiplication with U, equals A scalar multiplication with U plus B scalar multiplication with U. Field scalar multiplica <coughs> multiplication associativity for all real numbers A and B and for every U in R3, AB scalar multiplication U is equal to A scalar multiplication B scalar multiplication U. And uh, the scalar identity, multiplicative identity, for every u in R3, the scalar product of u in 1, u, 1 in u, equals u. Okay, so that's what we know of uh, our structure. R3, addition in R3, real numbers and scalar multiplication of vectors in R3 by real constants. We also know that R2, the structure, R2, addition in R2, scalars, real scalars, and scalar multiplication of vectors in R2 by real constants is also a vector space. Observe that we can view R2 as a subset of R3. So here we have the three-dimensional space x1, x2, x3. And then we're looking at the x1, x2 plane. 
observe that points on that plane are triples. A, the x, the x1 value, B, the y1 value, and then zero for the x3 value, because on the x1, x2 plane, x3 is zero. So let's define this set. This is the x1, x2 plane. Let's define it as S. So S is the set of all triples of the form x1, x2, zero, such that x1 and x2 are real numbers. Observe that S is a subset of R3, but not equal to R3. So, it should be evident that that set S is exactly R2, with the exception that we are expressing its elements as triples. Now, suppose that we are asked to establish that the structure formed by S addition of elements of s scalars the real numbers in scalar multiplication of elements in r3 by real numbers suppose we're asked to establish that the structure is a vector space if that's the case then we will need it to verify that all properties of vector spaces are satisfied by our structure. That is, we will, we will need to establish that uh, this scalar multiplication of R3 happens to also be scalar multiplication on S. This is technical. The operation dot where you take um, scalars and elements of S and produce elements in R3 is a scalar vector operation on S. That is, we want to show some sort of a closure. If A is a real number and U is an element of S, then the scalar product A dot U also happens to be in S. We also need to show that the addition of elements of S does happen to be a binary operation on S. That is, if you have elements U and V in S, their sum also belongs to S. This is what we often call closure. We want to show that S is closed under the addition in R3. We want to show that if you have U, V, W in S, the associated property under addition holds for those three elements. We want to show the commutative property. If U, V are elements of S, U plus V equals V plus U. We want to show that S contains theta, the additive identity of R3. We want to show that if U belongs to S, then its additive inverse is also in S. We want to show that if A is a real scalar, U and V are elements of S, that scalar multiplication distributes over addition in ele of elements in S. We want to show that if you have scalars A and B and you have U in S, that scalar multiplication distributes over field addition, over addition in R. We want to show that if you have scalars A and B and U in S, that the uh, scalar multiplication and field multiplication obey an associative property. 
And finally, if u is an element of s, we want to show that the scalar product of 1 and u is u. In other words, we want to show that 1 is the scalar multiplication identity. Okay, so those are all the things we, if we are asked to show that this structure is a vector space, we are being asked to establish each and every one of these properties. So, how do we proceed here? Let's proceed as follows. Let's show that if we have elements of S and we, multi and we perform the scalar multiplication by A, whatever, I get, whatever we get is still an element of S. So, so let A be a real number and let U be an element of S. Now we know that to be an element of S, your form, you have the form constant, constant, zero. So here I'm going to have U equals entry U1, U2, zero. For some U1, U2 real numbers. So we know that. Now, let's say take the scalar product of AU. So A dot U by definition is going to be AU1 AU2 0. Oh, but wait a minute. That's a real number. That's also a real number. So we conclude that this result does happen to be one of the elements of S. Okay, so our first property is verified. Second property. I want to pick two elements in S and I want to show that their sum is also an element in S. So let U, V be elements of S. In this case, U is going to be U1, U2, comma, 0, because it's an element in S, the last entry will be 0. V is also of that same form, V1, V2, 0. Now, what do we get when we add them? Well, we know how to add them. U1 plus V1, comma, U2 plus V2, comma, 0 plus 0 is 0. So, what we obtain does happen to be in S. A real number, a real number, 0. So, it's an element in S. Okay, so, we are done with these first two properties. Now, <clears throat> Let's talk about the next properties, the associative property and the commutative property. I want to show that for every, if, if I pick three elements in S, I want to show that uh, the associative property of addition is satisfied. Now, let me remark that uh, if you pick u, so, so let's do it this way. So let's begin. Let u be w the elements of the set S. Now we know that S is a subset of R3. Here, here is R3. X1, X2, X3 space. S is the x1, x2 plane. So that set S is a subset of R3. And we know it's not equal to R3, of course. But what then, what 
can we conclude then that u, v, and w then have to also be elements of R3? Since S is a proper subset of R3 or a subset of R3, then u, v, w are elements of R3 as a consequence. Oh, but then we already know something. We know that when you have three elements in R3, the associative property is satisfied for them because we, we have, from the, from the, from the get-go, we knew that R3 is a vector space. So any time that you give me three elements in R3, that's the moment that I'll give you that the associative property is satisfied. So, so I will say the following, in very fine, in very fine, our, our associative property will just appeal to the fact that we already, we already know that property to be true in the vector space R3. Similarly, for the commutative property, I'm going to, I'm going to pick. So, so if I let u, v, be elements in S, but S is a proper subset of R3, or merely a subset of R3, then immediately u, v are elements in R3. So, I then get that uh, the commutative property holds because it is a property of the vector space R3. So, so let me say this. The properties of associativity and commutativity, they happen to be inherited. In other words, I don't need to check that. If I, if I already know the properties are satisfied in the bigger space, then they are inherited for the subset of that space, for the subset of the set of that space. Okay, now, next. S contains theta. Now, that one, let's see. Let's see what, uh, what S is. S contains every order pair, excuse me, every other triple x1, x2, 0, so does 0, 0, 0 belong to S? The answer is yes, of course, because here you have a real number, here you have a real number, and here you have 0, yes? Here uh, you have x1, x2, 0 belongs to S, we let x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0, so theta belongs to s. Okay, so this particular set s happens to contain theta. Now, does s, con if u belongs to s, does the opposite of u belong to s? Well, let's see. So let u equal u1, u2, zero, which belongs to s. So I would say that uh, negative u, I would say that negative one dot u, which equals to negative u1, negative u2, zero, also belongs to s because you have a real number, a real number, and zero. They're all elements of S. Okay, so we're a little bit over halfway done, but observe, let's make the observation that uh, we have verified certain things from S. We verified um, closure of scalar multiplication. We verified closure of addition. We verified the, the, that S contains the additive identity we verify that for every element of S, its additive, um, its negative, its additive inverse also belongs to S. We didn't really need to verify a couple of properties. 
associative property, commutative property. Now, what about these last four? Do we need to verify these last four or do we inherit them? The fact is that we inherit those last four because here is how we're going to begin. We're going to begin, let A be a real number, let UV be elements of S. That immediately translates into UV being elements of R3. So that means the distribution of scalar multiplication of, over vector addition is satisfied because R3 Satis the property is satisfied in R3. Same deal here. We're picking U in S, so U is in R3. So the property is inherited from the structure R3, addition of our elements in R3, scalars real numbers, and scalar multiplication of vectors in R3 by real constants. Similarly for the associative property of field multiplication and scalar multiplication. We're picking an element of S. It also happens to be in R3, so we get that from the vector space R3. And uh, if U belongs to S, then U is an element of R3, so our last property is satisfied. Okay, so here's what here is what we have just studied. We just studied an instance of what we called a vector subspace. What is a vector subspace? Well, in general, is if you have a, a space, so, so in general, if the structure V plus F dot is a vector space and if S is a subset of B not empty the structure S plus F dot is a subspace of the structure is a subspace if and only if this structure S plus F dot is a vector space on on its own. So that's what we just exemplified here. We were given a vector space we were also given a subset of R3, which is not empty. And we were able to verify that the structure that you, that's formed by S, addition of R3, scalar multiplication by real numbers with S is also a vector space. But let's again observe that in the process of establishing this structure S was a vector space, we didn't need to check every single property of vector spaces because some were inherited from the original given vector space. Okay, so let's go and look at the formal definition. Okay, so definition, let V plus F dot be a given linear space or vector space, linear space, vector space for us will mean the same object. Let S be a non-empty subset of V. The structure S, F, S plus F dot is said to be a subspace of the structure V plus F dot if and only if S plus F dot is a vector space itself. 